Hey everyone, this is Jaron with Crazy Minnow Studio. Welcome back again to our Salsa Lip Sync Sweet Version 2 tutorial series. Sorry, I'm going to have to do this again. I'm I lied. We're not going to go over... No, I'm just kidding. We're going to go over settings, this data analysis section. This should be a pretty quick video. So what we have here in settings, if you remember back, I believe it was in the interface video, we talked about what we've got going on here. And uh, basically the only thing that is... Uh, displayed from the data analysis section is the samples and this means that we are going to be grabbing 512 samples each time we do a data analysis grab okay our settings in here update delay probably you should leave this where it is 0.08 is in seconds so it's eight one hundredths of a second and uh, basically what this means is salsa will pulse its processing and every eight one hundredths of a second it will grab a section of data from the audio file and it will process it and the reason there's this delay is because we need to give these visims that are configured down here plenty of time to do their animation on. Once we get the data analysis value during this process, Salsa will choose one of these visims based on its trigger. Let's say, for instance, we had an analysis value that was, say, 0.1. So it would fall on this F visim. And so this would be triggered, and it requires... Let me go ahead and go back. These all require the same thing, but I'll go ahead and open this one up. These both require 8 one hundredths of a second to animate on. So if you don't give it enough time, so let's say we set these to 0.2. If we didn't give it enough time between pulse checks, it would start animating on. And then the next time, if it wasn't that busy, it would, it would say, oh, we've got to turn that one off and turn on a different one. So it may get, you know, a quarter of the way, a halfway, whatever, and then it gets shut down. And you never get a full expression value at that point. So you can experiment with different values. And let's go ahead and start this up. Salsa. Okay. Simple so lip -sync this is the normal setting. The unique technology See, the lips are pretty responsive. They get plenty of time to animate. Now, if I increase this value, you're going to see it gets a little, it looks kind of smoother yet jerkier. So it's giving it plenty of time, but the reason it looks a, a little more stuttery, well, stuttery is not really the right word. It's taking much longer on the animation cycles, so it's not going to hit all of the nuances of the voice file. You'll get great results with now, this may be a look you're looking for, and that's totally fine. And, and we can adjust this up quite a bit, and it looks like a freeze frame kind of stuff, right? Now, likewise, if we go too, too low on this value, then it gets very jittery. And this is kind of what I'm talking about if we don't give the animations enough time to animate, then they don't go to their full value. And that may be what you're looking for as well. Salsa processes audio files in real time with zero Go ahead and turn off advanced dynamics here. Or shape mapping your audio. Results are but it's a little bit jittery. It is really fast. And again, maybe that's the look you're going for. All right, that covers the update delay. And then we have this auto adjust playhead bias. I would highly recommend just leaving this enabled. We've kind of gone through and tested values. And basically what this does is it presets the playhead bias and the sample size based on the audio file that you have selected. If I re-enable this, we'll see that it detects that the audio file that's currently slotted, that Salsa can see, is 44.1 kilohertz. So it, we've determined that we want to use a playhead bias of 2800, and we're going to grab 512 samples when we grab samples. So what does this part mean? We, we understand what all of this means. But what does this part mean, this playhead bias? Basically, the way we are analyzing audio right now, we can look ahead into the file, certain number of samples, and that's what this is in, number of samples. We can look ahead into the audio file and process before it gets to the pipeline where it is playing through FMOD. And that allows us to basically eliminate the latency that we used to see in Salsa 1, where the lips were responding after the audio had already played. Technically, the lips should be responding. Well, they shouldn't be responding. The lips should be driving the audio, right? Because when we speak, that's when we're forcing the air out of our mouth and it's creating the sound. 
the lips are in position and doing their thing before the sound really should be heard. So this is our look ahead value. Again, you can adjust this if you want. Uh, the value all the way up to 5,000, down to zero. We've gone through. We think these values look pretty good. If they don't look good with whatever your, your setup is, then you can go ahead and change them. Now, if you're using a microphone, this is different. If you're using the mic input add-on, and we'll do another video on that, and it has a way of setting this automatically. But if you're using your own microphone solution, then you most likely want to check this because the problem with using a microphone is that it has its own record buffer. So we can look ahead a little bit. It just depends on where the processing is. But if you look ahead too far, you go into the buffer and you look at a history of what was recorded and not what is actually being recorded. So using the microphone, if you enable this, it looks at what has been recorded. So it will attempt to stay in front of the playback head and stay behind the record head. Now, that is a tricky thing to do because those times are very, very close. We try to start playback as soon as we start the microphone. So it's really just milliseconds away. So there still might appear to be a little bit of latency when using a microphone. It's just because we can't really analyze anything until after it's already recorded. So once it's recorded, then we can start analyzing it. But using this checkbox, we'll try to ensure the number of samples that we're grabbing are behind the record head and, if possible, in front of the playback head. So that's the playhead bias. And then we already discussed sample size. You can change this if you want. 32 is probably way too small, depending on the recording you're doing. 512 is probably a generally good area. It just depends if you're doing a very low resolution recording, then you might want to drop down. Even 1024 is actually pretty good. It grabs more nuance and it looks, it analyzes a larger chunk of audio so that we're sure to get the peaks and valleys that we need to look at. And I think that is it for data analysis. So let's wrap this up. And in the next video, we'll go into the dynamics. This is my favorite section. This really is the thing I believe that makes the new versions uh, version 2 of Salsa makes the magic happen here, I believe. That's my opinion. I don't know. I might be biased. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.